for the benefit of the camera. You can talk them back and forth. Okay. <coughs> We're rolling. We're rolling. We're rolling. We're rolling. Slow down your pace of speaking. I will yeah. slow down my pace of speaking. This is can you touch his nose? Especially problematic when you're doing it. Can you keep the specs off his head? Are we allowed to ask questions? Now leave the specs. Leave the specs. People will trust it more that way. This is an explanation of G and I, which is part of the G and A, Global Names and Architecture. If you take questions either after or, or during, I don't really mind. But the main, the, so the first step is I'm going to reiterate. Uh, the, and we reconcile these components that we identified within the diagram that we created, okay? So to identify the, the, the indexing components of the GNA. So the first thing is a, a registry of providers, which is, which is essentially the collection of metadata that describes the resource. Index Fungorum, Catalog of Life, Zobank. And, and we, need to, we need to really flesh out over time. We can start with a minimal metadata profile, but I think it's worth really thinking through. And I've been, Anna Weitzman has agreed to, uh, to, to host a, to chair a committee to do that, um, but we're just getting started off. But that registry uh, is what I, what I intended to rep be represented by this component of, of the diagram. But, um, but in terms of point of, of origin for these uh, uh, resource metadata, I can imagine in the future that as we create tools like the checklist provider tool that get distributed in various places, that they can serve as an originating point for describing a resource. And so it could be that over time, we, we're, we're going to need to be able to exchange registry information. But we'll start off with one. Okay. I was going to say, David, can you actually explain the diagram like you did before, just the diagram, and, and don't and embellish, and yeah, don't embellish, it. just do what that diagram says. I would say hit those five points, yeah. okay, yeah. And, then, and then map them to the okay. diagram. Well, embellish. Quickly. Well, at the, at, at the bottom, what I consider to be the foundation of all of this is the resources represented by many of the people, who were curated by many of the people in the room. It's the nomenclature, taxonomic databases, and a lot of un currently unmobilized taxonomic resources that uh, are out there. And, uh, and then there's an, I just have an abstraction here, identified as a provider infrastructure, because it's going to not only be the provider tools, the post box that Patty's asserted, but uh, alluded to, but it's also uh, the, the collective services that are already in place amongst Ida's catalog of life that re require some sort of uh, reconciling to, uh, to be able to index them, to understand them. Um, so a registry of names, what we would call a name bank, is what this index really is. In, 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 in principle, name bank, either the UBIO name bank or just the concept of a name bank is not to be a nomenclature, but to be an index of name strings held and, and better treated by the, the components of this provider infrastructure. A refresh mechanism is simply a mechanism that is cataloged in the metadata of the resource that allows an index, a name bank, because I could potentially think that there could be multiple instances of an index, because once you have an architecture in place that's open, there's nothing that dictates that you can only have one. Just like in GBIF, multiple people could go and access a bigger server and recreate G a GBIF index somewhere else. Um, but a, uh, a refresh mechanism is simply a way that one can document how to return periodically to a resource to see if thing, anything has been add, updated, added, up, added, added, updated, or deleted. Edited, updated. Okay. A hosting service, resolvable links to a provider. Those are alternatives. So it can it can either host content. Oh, just okay. Because, yeah. Yes. Okay. So basically, that is referring to web services in place, which include most of you. IPNI already serves LSIDs and has web services, Paul does, Catalog of Life, so on. Um, but for a lot of the content that GBIF has, has um, supported in the ECAT program, such as um, Scott Miller's African Checklist of uh, Insects, the, uh, the um, Mervyn Mansell's Neuropteran database, they're sitting, in, they're, they're either off the web or they, there's no infrastructure in place to serve them. And there are going to be people like even potentially Chris Thompson, for example, who doesn't, he's running FileMaker, he may not be able to provide a tool. And so we have this notion of provider tools that are essentially uh, uh, hosting services for the data that allow a user to register themselves, mechanisms to upload the data they choose to serve, those data get mapped to a, a standard like TCS, and then there's an access point identified in the registry to allow us to go and, uh, and to retrieve what they're willing to serve. Um, a hit reporter for accreditation is what we've hypothesized and tried to conceptualize a little bit regarding an attribution service because as I said just at the end 
If we can do this right, and what is required for potential users, meaning your initiative, the GBIF, EOL, Catalog of Life, all these things, we're, we're looking to, we, we really need copies of some bit of what are sitting in all these different databases integrated within all these other initiatives in order to better inform data management and retrieval. But it will never really fly, it will always be problematic until we can have some way of hopefully reliably tracking how and, many, how and who is using those data and making that available back to the provider so that you can go to the funders and those who support you and say, look, I'm still doing everything I can within my site to support the scholarly users of my data, but there are, there are biological libraries out here and there are lots of a multiplicity of other uses that I can document that just show the, the, the utility of these data for all sorts of things that we couldn't imagine. And so that really requires something, since, since the usages are, are, federated, are, are scattered, um, we can't, it would be problematic to try to get everybody to come up with some consistent way of logging how they use it. So is there some way we can embed in the infrastructure something to build in? And something like when you provide your, your resource, perhaps something like an LSID that goes along with those data, that when resolved, resolves back to how you would like to see yourself cited within the site, or maybe by resolving the LSID, that there is an incrementer here as well that simply starts keeping track and you build into your infrastructure as you use the data, you just pop off that LSID to resolve it, and, and it enables multiple, in, in one place, uh, a way for a provider to say, this is how I want for these data to be uh, credited. So Frank could create using, um, his three-component his three component attribution mechanism is something that this ILSID resolves for this block of, of names. Um, and it would, it, it would allow some flexibility. I think this is to, just a concept, but it seems like we need something like this that's embedded in the infrastructure so that there are flexible ways of citing uh, attribution and, um, and, and giving credit. You had mentioned just a second ago the idea that there are multiple, potentially, indexes. Right? I mean, and I understand why, you don't have to explain why, but in the context of what you just described on this attribution service, perhaps there also needs to be a registry of index instances that allows us to aggregate those so we attribution kind of know who records. Are, so we know who are the folks that are lining up to, to right. the trough to take a drink, so to speak, right. to, uh, who are potential users. Oh, got it. Sorry. It's my sleepy machine. And that may be, need to be a component of it. Is some sort of uh, user user? No, it would be a registry no. of index instances. In yeah. Oh, oh. But but that's only on the presumption there are multiple indexes. And I wonder if we wouldn't start by having a single. We one. would start by it, having a single it, one. It, 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 we like it. It. Yes, we would. I'm just yeah. saying that in an open architecture, in just in the same case, the same thing with the GDIF index, but the GDIF network is not focused and centralized on the GDIF data portal. All of those tools and infrastructure that's put in, the, the, the data portal could go offline tomorrow if Dave Martin kicked his desk over, and uh, the GBIF network would still be in place, is the bottom line. And somebody could have a different registry of all these providers and go poll all those bigger providers and taper providers and build another implementation. In fact, that happens with BioCase, right? BioCase uses, well, BioCase comes mm. to us. But, uh, but Indio, or the, or NB, uh, the uh, where are they, the, the central region? There, that already happens where um, Indio is the... Uh, who? What? What are you referring to? The, who, what's the consortium that Indio is hosting? I want to say IMSLIC, mm -hmm. but it's not IMSLIC. No. Are you talking about Canavio? No. No. The, the Central American countries that have... There's, the, there's a oh, consortium. Oh. They have a portal. They currently do the same thing. They, they go to the same GBIF, the providers from GBIF. They independently harvest the subset that falls within Central America. IABIN. Thank you. The IABIN portal. Thank you.